I would like to uh, reconvene. We have one session left, and I don't want to. I don't want to have to cut the demos uh, uh, too much. So, uh, if we could get settled, please. No more jokes from George Matthews that nobody can figure out. <laughs> well, Bill, Bill Belichick loves the, uh, the surface, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, our next team, team number 17, Fridgeview. All right. Hello, everyone. We're Team 17, Fridgeview, and we're going to make your fridge cooler. My name's Ben. This is Kevin, Serville, Quan, and Jackson. And our customer is Ryan. So how many people here in the audience have ever been to the grocery store and wished that they could see what was inside their fridge because they forgot what they had? You know, I know I have. I've definitely called my roommate a bunch of times saying, hey, do we still have this? And this is actually a pretty big problem. About 40% of all food in America is wasted, and this is largely based on the fact that people think they ran out of something, they're at the grocery store, they buy it, they come home, turns out they already have it, now they have too much, and they just end up throwing it away. The opposite problem is also true. You think um, you think you have something, you don't buy it, you go home, and then it turns out you didn't have it, so you have to make another trip back to the grocery store, which is a huge waste of time and money. So there has to be a solution to this problem. And most of you are probably thinking, why don't you just buy one of those you know, smart fridges that exist? And you definitely could, but the problem is they're really expensive. The average price of a smart fridge now is about $4,000. And you also have to get rid of your current fridge, which is probably a working fridge. So our client, Ryan Legoy, who is an ECE alum, asked us to make a device that can be placed into anyone's fridge and turn it into a smart fridge. Uh, so the main features that FridgeView offers is that through an iOS app, you're able to get an insight of what's inside your fridge through multiple pictures that are being taken by the system. And at the same time, you're also able to monitor the activity of the system uh, by seeing temperatures and humidities that are being read. And we also implemented some, uh, some extra features uh, such as recipe generations through APIs. And you're also able to uh, make your shopping list and order them automatically from the Amazon pantry. So now here's a quick video showing our setup process and then a basic use case. So we use QR codes generated that have the Wi-Fi name and password, and then the central hub, since it has a camera on it anyway, takes a picture of that QR code, turns green, and connects to the internet that way. It also links your account to the central hub itself, and when it finishes, it says, Welcome to Fridgeview. This is the same way that you would sync up any cubes you have, which we'll talk about later, and you scan the QR code, and the light will turn green, telling you they've been added. So now here's a video from inside the fridge. We sped it up for time purposes, and you'll see that a picture gets taken, and then it gets uploaded to our server. And then when you're at the grocery store, you quickly pull out the app, look at the most recent photo, and it turns out you actually don't need to buy that chicken. You can also view recipes and see what ingredients you need for those recipes. And now here's Kevin to talk about the technical aspects of our project. So we have four main components of our system. Um, we have a central hub, which every client requires a central hub. You can see it in a moment. Um, and we have two peripheral cubes. We have a camera cube and a sensor cube. A sensor cube reads temperature and humidity data and up uploads it uh, to our cloud. And the camera cube just offers a different vantage point. So if you are uncertain that the central hub will capture everything that you want to see, you can place another camera cube wherever you'd like. The peripheral cubes connect to the central hub via Bluetooth, and the central hub connects um, via Wi-Fi to our server and database, where it uploads photos and all temperature and humidity data. Um, then wherever you are, you can open your phone, open the app, and it'll pull from the back end and display on your phone. So this is our central hub. Uh, it's powered by Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, it has a camera version 2 with a fisheye lens, so you have a greater field of view. It has a red, green, blue status LED, so you know what's going on at any time. And it also has a bright flash, because most, if not all, fridges do not have any light on the inside. 
Um, it connects to a hardware idle hat, uh, which I'll discuss more later, via general pin input output, and has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There are three operation modes, including setup, um, which is where you would add your peripheral cubes, image capture, uh, which is when it detects when the fridge is open and closed, and sensor reading, which will pull over a set period. Right now we have four hours to pull humidity and temperature data. So more to the hardware idle hat. Um, some of you might be familiar with the Sleepy Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi does not have uh, an idle, so it'll continuously draw current. Um, our device only needs to turn on every four hours or whenever the fridge opens, so for the other three hours and 58 minutes, it's just consuming power. So we developed our own Sleepy Pi, um, and that's this device. It's powered by an Arduino Pro Mini 5 volt. It has a real-time clock, a momentary push button, and a digital light sensor. Um, and it communicates with the Raspberry Pi via general pin input-output. Um, and based on the stimulus, that's what uh, data we send to the Raspberry Pi on what mode to operate into. And these are our um, beautifully designed uh, peripheral cubes. Um, on the left, you see our uh, sensor cube. Um, it is uh, powered by, uh, both of these devices are powered by alkaline uh, AA batteries. And sensor cube measures the both temperature and humidity inside the fridge and you can place it anywhere inside the fridge, such as a vegetable compartment, fruit compartment, and et cetera. And on the right side, uh, we got a lot of feedback from a lot of people that are saying uh, the, central hub, the image taken from the central hub is not enough to display all the items inside the fridge. So we instead create a, create, created a camera cube that will uh, take a multiple views of inside the fridge that will, um, that will talk to the, cent to the central hub. And both of these uh, communicate to the central hub through the Bluetooth communication. So I'm now going to go over through uh, what you, you can see from the FridgeView system, which is the backend. So our backend is, a, is implemented using a parse server hosted on Heroku and a MongoDB database. Uh, one of the main features of the backend is the image processing, which we decided to do it on the backend in order to remove any computations from the devices. Uh, so in order to do that, we use an API called Clarifyi, which uses pre-implemented uh, and trained neural networks adapted to recognize food items on the ingredient level. Uh, so the entire system basically gets triggered whenever we receive uh, from the central hub through HTTPS a picture. Uh, it would send a query to Clarifyi, and Clarifyi would answer to which JSON response. And now the next issue would be to store the items. Uh, we decided to create two different collections on the MongoDB database. Uh, one specific to the users and one specific to all of the items that we encountered so far. Uh, and that allows us to modify and add dietary information and food expiry estimations on every item that we've encountered so far on every user uh, devices. So continuing with the uh, server and the database, we use HTTPS post requests to the iOS app and the central hub, which both communicate via Wi-Fi. It's scalable for multiple users um, on different devices. So whether it's one user on an iPhone or an iPad, all of the information will be shared. Or it could even be roommates using the same account. So they would have all of the photos and the temperature and humidity readings would be shared. And they can even create a shopping list together. And then our round robin technique for Bluetooth is essential because we wanted the users to be able to add as many cubes as they wanted. So on our back end, we store sensor cubes, camera cubes, and the MAC address. And we store a pointer to the central hub. The central hub fetches any cube that has a pointer to itself, creates an array of the MAC addresses. It connects via Bluetooth, fetches the information needed, and then releases and continues to the next one. This would allow people to add as many cubes as they would like. I also worked on the iOS app, which is an MVC-designed app, which allowed us to work on the UI separately and update it as we wanted. Uh, it uses APIs such as the Spoonacular API to get recipes based on your inventory, and then we use the charts framework to get the charts you see here. The housing was cut from a quarter inch and an eighth inch thick uh, acrylic sheets. Um, acrylic turned out to be the perfect material for our housing as it's inexpensive, very shock resistant, and very fast to produce and adjust. Um, notches increase the stability of the structure as well. Last week, uh, our client, Ryan, uh, he tested our entire fridge view system in his own fridge. And if you look at the, the middle picture, you see a camera cube at the back of the fridge and a sensor cube inside of the vegetable compartment. And on the right, you see a central hub placing on the door side of the fridge so that um, you'll be able to see all the multiple views inside the fridge. And Ryan was very uh, happy with our product.
So in closing, um, this is Fridgeview. When we bring this thing to market, it would be pretty affordable. We're estimating about 150 for one central hub, one camera cube, and one sensor cube. Of course, people could buy different cubes depending on how big their fridge is and what they wanted. Um, for a prototype, we have decent battery life, about three to four weeks, which is greatly improved by the uh, idle hat for the Raspberry Pi that Kevin talked about. Our system is completely autonomous after the initial setup phase with the QR codes. So um, it basically means that it will work on its own. It's multifunctional, meaning that you can put it in your pantry if you'd rather have images of your pantry or read sensor readings from there. And it's modular and scalable, meaning that this could be scaled for supermarkets to install on their own system to view their inventory. And in the future, if we ever think of more ideas for cubes, we could add those too as long as they communicate via Bluetooth. So that's our project. We'd like to thank Professor Pisano and Professor Al Sheikh um, for assisting us over the past two semesters, as well as our um, customer, Ryan, who's been more than a customer and has helped us through the past year. So we'd like to open the floor for any questions. Have I tested the uh, lifetime of the battery outside of the fridge? Um, so the thing that the fridge does is it decreases the lifetime of the batteries inside the fridge because of the higher internal resistance. Um, we specifically use alkaline batteries because of their chemistry. They only tend to lose about 80% um, at this temperature range. So it would be more efficient, but we're not losing a lot due to the temperature change. We, uh, we've been testing this for the past couple of weeks, and we haven't noticed any blips or any uh, an anomalies in our data. And we were, also, um, we're, we were also kept in mind that when you close a fridge, there might be some humidity left on the lens, um, which is why our algorithm actually waits for a couple of minutes of darkness. Um, so it doesn't take the picture immediately, which is in the video you saw, like the minute and 30 seconds it took to actually snap a photo. So this was a problem that we uh, addressed very early on. We actually tested it in the ECE fridge here. Um, and we found that uh, we thought it would also be a Faraday cage, but we found that we could still be 10, 10, 12 feet away, and still it would work fine. Um, so that means that you can place these peripheral cubes in your pantry or somewhere close to your fridge, and you can still read data, and you can still use them wherever you would like. So, uh, in, uh, yeah, so inside, inside our cubes, we added some insulating. Oh, um, so the question was uh, if we thought about any safety issues on the, in the cubes. Uh, and yes, so uh, inside the cubes that we designed at the end, we added some insulating layers such that uh, the, any heat sinks doesn't touch any batteries so that they don't heat up and don't explode. So, yeah. Right. Uh, in Right, so um, this, the system takes only a picture whenever the fridge opens and closes, um, and that's whenever something would change. So uh, we thought about that, but it would be more uh, power ineffective, and since uh, contents only change whenever the system is open and closed, um, we can use the light sensor on the system and uh, just update with that information. Yes? At this current time, the cubes are not waterproof, but this is an alpha version. Um, in a beta version, we would have uh, custom PCBs, and then everything would be epoxied and totally waterproof. Right. Yeah, so for image recognition, so the question was, uh, uh, to elaborate more on image recognition. So for image recognition, the purpose is to detect on an uh, ingredient level what's inside your fridge. And in order to do that, we used an API called Clarify because they already pre-implemented and trained their own neural networks uh, so that we wouldn't have to do that ourselves. 
Uh, and yeah, so we uh, process all that on our back end. We send the query and we get the response in our back end. Okay, our next team is team number 19, Smart Pet Food Dispenser. Thank you, Professor Pazana. Could we uh, cue the lights, please? <laughs> all right, what's up, dogs? What's up, dogs? I'm going to start by asking all you guys a question. What does an iPhone and H-Pets have in common? Caller ID. All right. You guys aren't laughing too loud. That's probably because you don't know what my project is yet. So let's get into it. I want to start by introducing my team. Myself, Tom, Anderson, Erica, and Ryan. Anderson, what's going on, man? Now I'm getting the last word. Okay, so we're planning on making a play-proof device that will automize pet feeding and also improve your pet's health. Next. So pet feeding can be a little bit of an inconvenience uh, to business professionals that have to work late. So our plan here is to advocate to those people that can't always make it home on time. So as engineers, we plan to make an automated pet food uh, system that will feed your pet and not only feed it, but make it healthier in the time. So just a brief overview. Um, um, so what we're making again is an automated pet food dispenser that's aimed at optimizing your pet's health while at the same time making your life easier. Um, our customer contact works at Cognition. His name's Fabio. And the final state of the project is that it's fully functional as you'll see in the uh, video that you see. Oh God, oh no, I forgot to feed Rhett. That's the eighth time this week. All right, I just gotta sign into my account real quick. Okay, okay, I gotta set the time to 2.03. He loves that time. Oh, okay, okay, he's getting kind of fat though, so only 130 grams for today. Do you need the handbook? Yeah. How do you ask So, how should an automatic pet dispenser work? So, what are the type of requirements for this? So, first we have a mechanical device. So, for this, we have a bin to store the electrical components, as well as the Raspberry Pis, the uh, RFIDs, the scale, and the motor. We also have a separate compa uh, compartment for the food as well, to avoid contamination. And last, we have a hopper, which will ensure proper dis dispensing of the food. Next, we have the uh, device. So we have a central hub, which is a Raspberry Pi, which controls all the peripher per peripheral devices. And we have software as well to ensure that accurate food dispensing is maintained. 
Lastly, we have the mobile device, or mobile application, where the customer can interact with the physical device itself by uh, setting the feed times as well as the feed amount. Then the user can look at the statistics for the individual pets as well. Okay, so Tom and I worked on the mechanical system. Um, it features a motor controlled hopper that dispenses whatever quantity of food the user specifies. Um, currently, our storage unit holds about a 10 pound bag of dog food. And the embedded system that we feature um, listens for weight changes in the scale that reads. So this is the encasing, pretty accurate depiction of what our device looks like. Um, our back bin holds all our electronics as well as our dispenser and motor um, and our storage unit. The front bin holds our uh, food bowl which sits on top of the scale and this base plate that we have. Um, everything fastens into that for um, a low center of gravity so no pets is going like, to knock it over. So I know you guys have been hounding for more, but I'm back. I want to talk about the canister. It's a Zevro. We cut it with a laser, and we connected it to a PVC pipe by machining a piece that drops down past the spinner and sucks into this PVC pipe. Can we advance to the next slide? Above that is a storage unit. We'll filter in the food into that canister, and below that, we don't have a picture of it, but it's a mount that will set the motor in place with a set screw so it doesn't turn, and we can properly dispense the food. I do not have any dog puns. Um, so I worked on the mobile application portion of the project. And so when I was working on it, I wanted to focus on three main things. Those were personalization, a seamless login and sign up process, and visual statistics. For personalization, we really wanted the user to be able to specify things like the pet weight, the pet breed, things like when I want the pet to be fed, the time it's being fed, et cetera, so that we could really analyze their statistics better and get their pet fed on time. Moreover, we wanted the seamless, uh, the sign up and login process to be very seamless so that the user could be signed up in under three minutes. And if AWS can send the e email quickly enough, that generally happens on time uh, for the confirmation. Lastly, we wanted the visual statistics to be visually appealing and easy to understand. All right, so let me walk you through how the product actually works. So there are four components controlled by a central hub, which is Raspberry Pi. So firstly, the Raspberry Pi pulls the DynamoDB database once every three hours to update the current list of user set times, as well as the current uh, feed amount. So once the current time matches up with the uh, user set time, the scale is pulled to look at the current weight. If the current weight is not within a certain margin of error of the uh, feed amount, then the motor will start spinning and food will start dispensing. The motor spins for half a second, then it pulls the scale again. This process repeats until the uh, current weight is within a certain margin of error of the feed time, or feed amount, my bad. And lastly, the RFID scanner will start uh, scanning for any local RFID tags, which will be attached to the collar of a pet. So this functions as when a pet comes to eat, the timestamp of the pet, or when it came to eat, will be pushed into the database, and this will be shown in the statistical side of the mobile application. Okay, so that's a circuit, and that basically just summarizes our entire <laughs> our entire uh, component, electrical components of our project. Basically, we have our power source, which is a 12 volt, 2 amp. It's connected directly to the machine. Uh, that powers the motor, which is also 12 volts, uses about 0 0.07 amps, a very small current. We control that by sending a signal from the Pi to the motor, uh, to a transistor in the circuit that and then turns on the motor. Um, we had to use a voltage regulator to step down the voltage in order to power the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, and also, we needed enough uh, current and voltage in order to power all the peripherals uh, that would be attached, such as the scale and the RFID that are connected to the Pi. So this is Fabio, our customer, and though he might not look super happy in this picture, he was actually very happy with our installation process. So that starts when the user would actually theoretically purchase the device. There would be a 16-digit machine ID and a 16-digit pet ID on the RFID tag. Those would be loaded into the mobile application on sign up. So we asked for details like that, um, the machine ID and the pet are ID, ID, as well as pet name, um, when you want the pet to be fed, etc. And so it's really explained out to the user in a very um, sequential process, and it's very easy to understand what's going on. Thank you. 
questions. A uh, question about, I don't know if I picked up on this or not, are you able to like schedule out like daily or is it only just when you set it, it'll hit once and then go on from there? Yeah, so you can set it daily. So basically how it works is that you would set a time and every day at that specific time it would dispense. You can also add and remove times and you can do it multiple times a day if you want that as well. I have a rough question that I've been scratching at for a little bit. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's infectious. Uh, so I, I noticed that you, you manually set the, the amount of food that I feed my dog. I actually have no idea how much I feed my dog. I feed the bowl. Like, how do I, like, I, it's like one quarter of the bowl, but how do you calibrate that? Like, you, you said, like, the. Yeah, what do you do with the dog? <laughs> it's the quarter of the bowl. But, like, seriously, like, how do I calibrate, like, how much I feed my dog based on what I want? Sure. So basically, we actually have a scale as part of the device. So when you initially would start up the application, you could just pour the amount of food that you would usually feed your dog onto that scale, see what the scale reads, and then you could just feed that into the mobile application. So there's no like calibration to help me. Like, I mean, he just pointed out, like, I probably am killing my dog. Like, I don't want. <laughs> yeah, I guess you'd have. You a don't have like dog. a calibration. We don't have that yet. That would probably okay. be a feature that would be scored in the future. So currently, uh, if it runs out, the motor will spin for, let's say, uh, a few seconds, and it will notice in software that the weight hasn't changed. When that happens, that um, in the future, we will notify that th the app that, oh, since the motor has been spinning, nothing's been changed in weight, we've run out of food. Woof. Uh, this is going to be rough. Uh, I don't, I don't want to start barking up the wrong tree here, but I'm a pretty strong dude. I had a tough time uh, budging this thing. It's easy to carry for a user, uh, but we actually added a base plate to the bottom that's going to connect the two pieces, and it acts as a very low center of mass, so even big dogs will have a tough time moving it. Exactly. Uh, so for right now, we've designed this for just, yeah, so we asked about a multi-pet home and how that would work with uh, this device. Um, for right now, that's a little beyond the scope of what we designed. Uh, we were designing for just one pet uh, right now as far as like other dogs eating other foods. Um, that, that could be something that could be discussed in the beta version of the project. Yeah, I, I had a question. Uh, and what was the final cost? Uh, so final cost ended up being somewhere in the $200 ballpark range, uh, maybe a little more. But that was just because um, of like some experimental errors at the, at the start. And uh, buying pieces individually is always more expensive. Uh, so when mass produced, it would become uh, a good deal cheaper. Oh, that's a good, uh, a good point. So ours is pretty, uh, yeah, I'll repeat the question. Uh, so he's asking how our product differs from other products that connect to mobile devices. Um, ours is kind of more all-encompassing. Not only does it 